Hello and welcome to this little tutorial where I'll be talking about a very well loved feature in Commando which is the GitHub Sync. Now as part of any sort of good development uh, continuous integration environment you want to have a place where you're developing models and your processes and everything um, locally in a development environment potentially and we can do that and we usually do that uh, right here on my little desktop with the desktop modeler right here and then we will tend to in, uh, upload that into a GitHub repo like this um, then things get interesting because now we have a feature where we can synchronize what happens in that repo um, in order to bring that into Commanda uh, SAS and then be able to directly deploy that to a running environment and I'm going to step through exactly how to do that including the configuration of the GitHub um, uh, connector as well as showing some real interesting diffing features as well along the way so let's get started you may wonder, hey Niall, how come you know so much about how to set this up? I'm glad you asked. The question is, of course, that I read the docs sometimes. And in this case, I definitely do. And you should too. And what we're going to do is we're going to step through exactly what the docs say, and then we're going to build uh, the connection between the two things and then synchronize them and see what happens along the way. So uh, the first thing is we need to create a uh, GitHub app. Okay, so it requires a GitHub app to do that. Luckily, we have some documentation from GitHub on exactly how to do that. So let's go here and let's go. Now, the organization we're going to be using is going to be for um, my dear friend, uh, Punt uh, Speedchunk, and the project is called Space Mutiny. So let's go in the top right hand corner. We should click on the profile picture and navigate uh, to the settings. Click your organizations, settings, developer settings, GitHub app. That sounds reasonable. So let's click up on on. Uh, uh, punt speed chunk here. Uh, let's go to settings. Let's go down to um, applications. And we have no applications installed, so maybe that's a good opportunity for us to go ahead and do that. And that, as the doc suggests, is in developer settings. Okay, so here we are. We're in GitHub apps. Let's create a new one. Marvelous. Okay, so this is the Commanda Sync app. Um, we can write something to display to the users how I sync my models. Uh, homepage. Here we go. Homepage. Great. Um, now let's go back to the docs to make sure I'm doing everything correctly. So uh, under web hooks, select um, uh, active. Okay. So if I go back here. Deselect active. So I'm going to go down here and unselect active. Great stuff. Uh, what's next? Under permissions, I need to do rewrite uh, permission repository, select read and write the following. Commits, statuses, and pull requests. Great stuff. So let's go down to our um, permissions and let's find them one by one. So we need commit statuses. Uh, da -da -da commit statuses and let's go read and write cool we then have contents let's go read and write and finally we have pull requests let's go down to pull requests look this is alphabetical order read and write fantastic so what else does it say then create to finish great so let's create this app Okay, so hey, we've got a um, the app created. We got some a client ID, an app ID, and stuff like that that'll probably come in handy. So what's next? Only one place knows for sure, and that is the docs. So we've finished our app. So we need to generate a private key. So in my application, navigate, uh, go to general private keys. Cool. So there's general uh, la -da -da, private keys. Generate private key. Cool. Uh, that should download something. It does indeed. Cool. So I have a private key generated and there it is in all its glory. Marvelous. I'm sure I'll come back to that later. Let's continue. What happens next? Um, the key how many? Cool. Uh, so install the GitHub app in your application settings page and navigate to install app. Okay. So let's go to um, save changes, I guess it's important. Cool. Um, let's go to install app right here. And yeah, let's install Punt Speed Chunks um, uh, GitHub. Okay, we're gonna. I think we have to select a specific repository. Um, so install app, click install button. You can't select um, only select a repository. So choose the one repository that we actually want. Luckily, uh, Chunk only has Space Mutiny. So let's install that. 
Hurrah, we did it. And next, once redirected to the applications, copy the install ID, which is located in the URL. OK, so back here, here's the URL. Here's the install ID. I will copy that. I'm sure that'll come in handy as well. And next, configure the web modeler. OK, cool. So let's go to the web modeler now and see what we can do. OK, so let's go here. Let's go to the web modeler and let's create a new uh, process application. So there we go. This is going to be called Space Mutiny. I'm going to create the process application, also called Space Mutiny. It's important that you have the correct version of um, a command installed for this. So let's create. Hurrah! Now, here's the fun part. We have the Connect to GitHub button, which I assume we're supposed to take a look at. And we need a whole bunch of stuff. We need a client ID and installation ID. Now, I do remember I copied the installation ID from the header, so I'll put that in there. Client ID, I suppose, I will find in my GitHub app. So let's go, just go into settings, maybe. App settings. That makes sense. Seems the kind of place. Client ID. Hurrah! Found it. That wasn't so hard. Cool. So now I need to add my private key, which I downloaded earlier, as I recall. So. I'm going to go and do that. Um, that might be a little bit secret, so you just wait here. So I found the key. I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to go back over here and just paste it in there. OK, cool. Um, branch name is going to be main, because uh, that's the only branch I think we have. Oh, we need the repo, and the repo should be pretty easy. Uh, let's go back to my repositories. And let's go here. And this is the repo that we're going to try and synchronize. So let's add it right in here. Cool. Let's save this configuration. Amazing. And let's select. So obviously, it's trying to pull it down. It notices that this is different. I obviously don't want the version I have. I just want the GitHub version. So I'm going to select the GitHub version here. Um, and it's going to be the um, the one that I think we, we primarily care about. I'm going to click pull and that's going to uh, pull down, hopefully, the stuff from GitHub and I should then be able to check that out. Let's see. Synchronized. Close. Hurrah! Look at that! And then my uh, process is uh, complete. So now I can go here. I can uh, look at my model and I can make some changes to it, of course. So there's my uh, my little space mutiny um, uh, model deciding on eligibility for a space mutiny. Uh, there's a lot of factors. Uh, being able to hold your breath for a while is important. Uh, disliking intergalactic um, uh, regimes, very important. And let's just change that to a parallel gateway. And after eligibility, let's just um, add another task. And this is going to be something. It's not really important. I just want to see if I can synchronize things back. So there we go. We've added that. Cool. Nice little something. Let's go back to our space mutiny. And let's sync with GitHub and let's see what happens. So this is going to be, I'm going to call this version 1.1 and synchronize. Looking good. Cool. So now let's go back to um, the repo of punt speed chunk. And we should be able to see if we refresh this that I've just updated the BPMN model. I have indeed synced by the web modeler. Hurrah! Down first. So let's uh, fetch changes from my GitHub space mutiny. Looking good. Let's pull. OK, we're done. And now if I open this up, I should be able to edit that lovely thing that was deployed. Uh, there it is. There's something. Uh, let's add like one more thing. Let's just add a timer, a little timer boundary event. Let's have a duration of PT 33 years. We, we, we want to wait a long time. Um, that is ISO. Oh, no. Silly me. 
Uh, and let's have an end event. Super. So let's save that. And let's see if this round trip works. Let's um, push that. There's the difference there. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you what happens when we get some different versions of the same process. Uh, because we do have some really cool features uh, that actually deal with this really well. And also I'm going to start deploying some stuff now so we can actually see it running. So uh, let's go. That's all good. Repository is clicking along nicely. Let's see. I just got updated. Fantastic. So let's go back here and let's once more synchronize uh cool let's just click that okay okay as we can see we now have a little timer event but if i didn't know what changed how would i figure that out well luckily enough we do have milestones implemented and the milestones are really really good because they actually help us track the changes in a really lovely visual way so let's just take a look at the milestones here and it's going to get the older versions of the process and see okay so there's we added that then we have we've added this and if we had edited anything it would also be visible it's very very cool so we can see and track the changes of the model and if you're the kind of person who's more interested in let's say uh, what happened in the xml we also have a code view here that you can take a look at how that was changed and then it's just up to you to deploy it and deploying is really easy from here we just need to go back to our uh, main process click deploy and then we have our straight through lifecycle from GitHub to um, our, um, our deployment. So there's the deploy button. It's got five resources in this application. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And let's just click deploy. Now I'm going straight to dev, of course, but you can also set up um, your defined stages of deployment where you can pick the individual clusters that you might be using. So I'm uh, putting my dev cluster here. I have no testing cluster. I have a stage and I have a production cluster. So that way you're able to track the full CICD, do some testing and make sure this thing works. So yeah, that's what we have running right now. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope it helped you understand how to do the synchronization. Hope it was as much fun for you as it was for me. Cheerio.